I'm Annie, I'm a young rep for Young Epilepsy and today I'm at Great Ormond Street Hospital with Dr Martin Tistel. So, hello. Hi. <laughs> it's great to be sat with you today. Thank you very um, much for coming to chat with me. <laughs> yeah, it's no problem. So, as a start question, I'm really interested to know um, what made you want to become a brain surgeon in the first place? So I wanted to be a doctor from when I was very young, um, but I was really drawn to surgery because it has a, a practical aspect to it as well. And I think you uh, get to make a very significant change in really uh, just a day's work uh, to, to a, a child or a young person. It must be great to know you're having an impact on their life so much though and that they're going to really remember you. Like I mean, we, we get lovely letters from, from families which really highlights that. Mm. Uh, you know, currently we're doing about 120 operations a year, but actually for each of those people it can be a very significant event. So if you could sum up, what would you say qualifies a patient for epilepsy surgery? Lots of children have epilepsy. Most of the, or two thirds of those children will have what we call generalised epilepsy, which means that the whole brain is somehow involved in the process of them having seizures. And those children are not candidates for epilepsy surgery because removal of a small piece of the brain, which is really what we're talking about, is not going to stop the seizures. So the first and most important thing is that they have what we call focal epilepsy, where the epilepsy is just coming from one place. We then need to be able to identify where that place is. So we have quite a standard uh, evaluation process that we go through with any child who's thinking about having epilepsy surgery. The first thing to say is that they have to be having seizures which are not controlled by medication and that would be the starting point for an evaluation. And then if they have seizures which always seem to look the same, that might be a suggestion that the seizures are coming from one place. So we would then go through a process of evaluation which involves medical doctors, it involves MRI scans. The other thing we do is take uh, electrical tests from the brain, so we, we do something called video EEG, where we would video the seizures and collect electrical information from the brain during the seizures. We also have evaluation with psychologists and psychiatrists, and there are particular reasons for that to understand how the brain is working and whether those children might be at risk of other disorders. And then we bring all that information together um, with a group of clinicians and based on our experience and the results we can then decide whether surgery would be a good option. So once all these tests have been done, what would you say are the next steps for a patient um, awaiting their surgery? The first step then is what we call a multidisciplinary team meeting where I would meet with the urologists who've been looking after the, the child and other specialists such as neuroradiologists and neurophysiologists and we go through all of the data. If at that meeting we decide that we think surgery is a good option we would then arrange to meet with the family and the child and have a discussion with them because we can give them our advice as professionals but the final decision as to whether surgery is right for them and their child is actually down to the family. So fairly extensive process, a lot of people involved. A lot of people so, involved, yeah. yeah. So, this is kind of a two-part question. Um, so in the short term, what would you say are the physical and mental after effects of the surgery? The vast, vast majority of children who come in for brain surgery will have no adverse effects or no complications from that. So what will happen is they'll go for their operation. The next few days, they'll feel a little bit groggy and they'll feel a bit sore, but we're very careful to give them good painkillers so that they're nice and comfortable. We expect most children who go through epilepsy surgery to be in hospital between five and seven days. By the time they go home, we expect them to be back to their normal function, so walking around, eating and drinking, feeling quite calm and quite well, and then we would let them go home. And they normally need about four weeks off school just to recuperate at home, and that's really just because they feel quite tired after what they've been through. And it's not um, uncommon for people to come back at six months or a year and say that there have been benefits above and beyond stopping the seizures. They'll say that their children are more engaged, they may be uh, sort of more active, they may be doing better at school. It's not true for everyone. Our main job in epilepsy surgery is to stop the seizures, but there are actually additional benefits that can happen as well. So before I had brain surgery, I was very unsure on whether I was going to end up like losing all my hair yeah. or <laughs> yeah. um, exactly how far that would go. So how much hair actually has to be lost? So that's a really good question because one of the things I get asked most by uh, young patients and particularly by young women who come in for surgery is how much of their hair we're going to shave off. So many years ago, if you were going to have surgery on your brain, you would have all of your hair shaved off. 
but that's completely changed and we're very aware that it can be quite a distressing thing for people to lose hair, particularly if they've been growing it for all of their life, which is sometimes the case. So what we normally do is shave a very thin strip of hair, about five millimetres wide, just in the area where the surgical incision will be made. I've several times seen people very anxious about this before surgery, but I've never seen anyone worried about it after surgery because actually it's not nearly as big a deal as they think it might be. A big question that I know a lot of people want to ask is what is the chances of your seizures completely going away and just being erased? And That's obviously what we'd like to achieve in everyone is to try and stop all of their seizures and ideally get them off all their medication as well. Mm. Overall, we have about two thirds of patients who have no seizures after surgery in the longer term. Okay, yeah, that's good to know. It's a high percentage and can really change people's outlooks because even a third might lessen the seizures, which is what I've found. And it's personally happened to me so far. Right. I have far less seizures. Yes. So. And that can be a significant improvement in your quality of life, even if mm. the seizures don't go away. I would also say that some children, even if they're not having any seizures at all, still need to remain on some medication. Mm. So what we do is we do the surgery, evaluate for six months. If there's no seizures at six months, we then start to generally slowly reduce the medication. And we would hope to get all the medication off, but sadly that's not true for every patient and some will need to carry on with some medication to keep their seizures fully under control. That's good to know, like even if I was taking medication but no seizures, I'm sure people would be far happier than Absolutely. having seizures anyway. So. Absolutely. Okay, it's been great chatting with you today Martin, I think I've learnt loads about that I didn't know about the behind the scenes of the surgery and I think that's a nice roundup of, of epilepsy surgery and how that goes. That's great, thank you very much for coming to chat to me.